Hello everyone. According to the classical ecological theory, succession stops when a city has reached at an equilibrium or a steady state with the physical and biotic environment. Barring major disturbances, it exists indefinitely. This is the end point of succession and is known as climax. So, in this module, we are going to talk about the concept climax and the examples of succession. The learning objectives of this module are characteristics of climax, theories explaining climax, the monoclimax theory, polyclimax theory, climax pattern theory or population pattern theory. Then we will be talking about the examples of succession that is the hydrosiri or hydrage and xerosiri or xerarch. Characteristics of climax. Climax community in ecology is the mature, relatively self-maintaining serial stage in which the succession terminates. In a climax community, all the species component of that community perpetuate themselves through reproduction till the climate remains the same. In a climax community, the species composition should remain the same over a long period of time with all the growth forms ranging from seedling to maturity stage. Climax community, however, is not a static community, rather maintaining dynamic equilibrium with the physical and biotech environment. This dynamic balance or equilibrium is maintained through various forms of interaction among the species and between the species and environment through energy flow, nutrient cycling, food web, etc. Climax community generally has certain characteristics. The climax vegetation is tolerant to the prevailing environmental conditions and tend to be messy. It has generally high species diversity and complex and higher degree of ecological organization. Theories explaining climax. There are major three theoretical approaches to identify and describe the climax communities and they are the first one is the monoclimax theory, the second is polyclimax theory and the third one is the climax pattern theory. Monoclimax theory which is also known as climatic climax theory. This theory was proposed by Clemens in 1916. As per this theory, Climate is the cause and climax is the result. Since for each major climate, there will be only one climax and this climax is known as climatic climax. In other words, it is the climate that controls the occurrence of the life form of the dominant species and which is in turn become the characteristic appearance of the climax community. That's why this theory is also known as climatic climax theory. Given sufficient time, all serial communities in a region, be it aquatic system or terrestrial ecosystem, will coverage to and stabilize at a single climax. That is, the whole landscape will be with uniform plant community and will overcome all the effects of differences in topography, edaphic factors and other factors. According to this theory, Communities other than the climatic climax are considered as serial stages. Clemens also proposed four different terms to describe the occurrence of more than one stable and self perpetuating community in a given climate, which may be different from climatic climax, but related to the climax by successional development and are described as pre-climax, a stable and self perpetuating community that is climax community when occur in an area which is dry or more xeric than the general conditions of the region or general climates of the region and described as pre-climax community. Next is post climax, a stable and self perpetuating community when occur in an area which is comparatively more moist compared to general features when it is described as post climax. Subclimax, a stable and self perpetuating community in an area when occur due to peculiarities in the phys 
zero graphic or edaphic conditions indicating the arrest of succession is known as subclimax. However, for after a long period of time, the subclimax has the potential to change into climatic climax. And the fourth one is this climax. When the climatic climax is replaced by a self perpetuating and relatively stable community due to reoccurring biotic interferences, then such climax is described as this climax. The polyclimax theory. This theory was proposed by Tansley in 1935 to describe the occurrence of several climax communities in a region forming a mosaic of vegetation climaxes which are regulated either by soil moisture, soil nutrients, topography, fire or biotic activity. According to this theory, it is the spatial pattern or heterogeneity of habitats that influences the spatial pattern that is the mosaic of climax communities. To describe the existence of climax communities under different habitats, Tansley recognized following five different types of climaxes. Some of these are primary climaxes whereas others are secondary climaxes. The climatic climax, climax community which exists under normal climatic conditions in absence of a form of disturbance is described as climatic climax. Edaphic climax, when stable and self perpetuating communities develop in parts of the same area due to peculiarities in soil that is variation in edaphic factor and are different from climatic climax then they are described as edaphic climax. Topographic climax, differences in topography may give rise to different local microclimates each of which in turn can support a self perpetuating and self community then such climax communities are described as topographic climax. Next is the fire climax. When climax communities occur in response to recurrent burning of vegetation which eliminates the fire susceptible species then such climax community is known as fire climax. The last one is the zootic climax. When climax community occur in response to recurrent current biotic factor for example like grazing of cattle then such climax community is known as zootic climax. So here the climatic climax, edaphic climax and the topographic climax are considered as primary climaxes whereas the fire climax and the zootic climax are secondary climaxes. Secondary climaxes that is the fire climax and zootic climax are similar to Clement's monoclimax hypothesis. The climax pattern theory or population pattern theory. Whittaker in 1953 rejected the classification approaches of describing climax and proposed climax pattern theory which is based on a combination of the continuum or gradient concept and the individualistic concept of the plant association. That is the reason why this theory is also known as population pattern theory. He believed that since species composition and the balance of climax community is determined by the total environment that is including both the biotic and abiotic factors of the ecosystem, any change in the environment will result into the mosaic of climax vegetation. The climax community represents a pattern of population that corresponds to the changes with the gradients or patterns of environment to form eco-clean. According to this theory, the communities that occupy the largest area in the eco-clean are known as the prevailing climax or climatic climax. This theory recognizes a spatial pattern of climax vegetation which reflects the spatial variation in the environmental conditions at that point. There is thus no discrete number of climax communities and no one factor determines the structure and stability of a climax community. Next we will be talking about the examples of succession. The first one 
we will talk about is hydrocere or hydrage. Succession that starts from an aquatic ecosystem that is ponds, pools or lakes is known as hydrocere. After the exposure of the water body which are clear, poor in nutrients and devoid of much life and thus incapable of supporting any life form. The hydrocere started with pioneer plant community generally consisting of planktons through various serial stages terminated in forest as climax community. Changes occur both in plant community as well as in animal community during the course of succession. We will be talking about the examples to describe the various serial stages of hydrocere starting from an aquatic habitat of the dry tropical regions. The first stage is phytoplankton stage. Pioneer colonizers are phytoplankton that is microscopic algae, diatoms and bacteria, etc. which colonizes the primitive medium of ponds. They multiply and colonize quickly. Some microorganisms like bacteria and fungi feed on these phytoplanktons also colonize there. The phytoplanktons and these microorganisms after their death decompose and result in the release of minerals which in turn will mix up with the stilt brought from the surrounding land by rainwater and by wave action of pond water. These autogenic influences result in this development of soft mud at the bottom of the pond and enrichment of aquatic habitats which now can support different types of organisms. Submerged stage, this new habitat which tends to be a little shallower allows penetration of light on the shallow regions become more suitable for the growth of rooted submerged hydrophytes. First by deep water submerged hydrophytes for example potamogeton, nitella, cara followed by shallow water submerged hydrophytes for example hydrilla etc. Some small animals will also invade and colonize. These plants and animals brought about further buildup of the substratum as a result of their death and decay. The depth of water level decreases therefore pond becomes less deep or more shallow, turbid and nutrient rich. This creates a new habitat which will replace these plants by more nutrient demanding floating hydrophytes. Third stage is the floating stage, two different forms of floating Hydrophytes will represent this stage first by rooted floating hydrophytes which will be followed by free floating hydrophytes. Among the rooted floating stage, deeper zones are occupied by such species which are rooted in mud but those leaves reach the water surface and float. For example, Nilambo and Typha. The floating leaves on the surface of water body will transpire water. Gradually with evaporation of water, the concentration of nutrients increases and become sufficient to support free floating species which are not rooted in mud. The free floating stage, free floating plants for example, Lemna, Wolfia, Azola, Pisthia and Sylvania etc. floats freely on the water surface having no contact with mud of pond but the upper surface of leaves are in contact with air colonize and gradually cover the water surface. Water level decreases further therefore pond becomes more shallower. Decomposition of organic matter due to death and decay of these plants further build up more substratum. The floating leaves co communities cast shade on their preceders submerged communities and eliminate them by creating a deficiency of light. The raised bottom level is invaded by next serial community. Third is the emergent and curd hydrophyte stage. Pond marines because of good environmental conditions of high moisture, enough light and aeration soon gets covered by emergent hydrophytes for example Sagittaria and Typha. Although their root system is completely underwater and anchored in soil but their shoots are partially or completely exposed to air. So are like amphibian plants. 
They have well developed rhizome and form very dense vegetation. These plants start from margins and then cover the pond. These plants facilitate considerable decrease in water level resulted in change in substratum which in turn changed the aquatic habitat into marshy land or swamp. This stage is often known as red swamp stage. The next is the sedge meadow stage with change in the nature of substratum to swamp. Members of the family Cyperaceae and Poaceae invade and form a mat like vegetation with the help of their much branched rhizomatous systems. As a result of high rate of transpiration, much rapid loss of water occurs and thereby mud is exposed to air. This resulted in change in the nutrient status that is from ammonia to nitrates. The area will become more mesic and this resulted in disappearance of marshy vegetation. Next is the glass ramp stage or woodland stage. Soil becomes drier for most part of the year with much accumulation of humus rich in nutrients facilitated the invasion of terrestrial plants. First herbs, then shrubs and finally trees. The next stage is the forest stage. Depending upon the climate, the climax will be rainforest, temperate forest or the tropical forest. The diagram describes the various cereal stages of hydroceries starting from aquatic habitat of the dry tropical region. The next example for uh, succession is the zero siri or zirach. When succession begins on any kind of dry habitat, it is known as zero siri. Since dry habitat may be different type, so the consequent succession may be of the following types. The type of habitat is sand and the name of consequent succession will be samosiri. For rock, it is lithosiri and for highly saline or physiologically dry soil, it is halosiri. Below is an example of lithosiri of tropical region. Successional trend is governed by the process of soil formation and accumulation. Bare area that is rock faces scarcity of water, lacks any organic matter with disintegrated unweathered nutrients. Organisms which can survive in these harsh conditions can colonize such habitats as pioneer community. Pioneer community is generally represented by crustose lichens whereas the climax community by forest. The first stage is the crustose lichen stage. Crustose lichens example Rhinodina, Rhizocarpus and uh, Lycanora since can grow and multiply in these harsh conditions. Form crust on the dry rock and remain in the dormant conditions for very long time. They produce some carbonic acids which bring about weathering of rocks in form of cracks or roughen the rock surface. They may absorb water from rain and dew drops from wet their external surface. In the space thus created, dust and dead organic mat material of these lichens accumulate and provide space and growth conditions for the next higher life forms to invade. Folios lichen stage, the habitat thus created is now suitable for the growth of folios lichens like dermatocarpon. Folios lichens have leaf like thalli, can absorb and retain more water and are able to accumulate dust particles. The habitat will now become unfavorable for the growth of crustose lichens as folios lichens cast shade on them. Folios lichens also produce some acids which not only make the soil acidic but also facilitate weathering of rocks. Some microorganisms like bacteria and fungi appear along with few small invertebrate animals which also become associated with lichens. Humus is added through the decomposition of dead lichens and other organisms. All these processes accumulate the formation of thin layer of soil on rock surface, especially in crevices. The next stage is the moss stage. 
development of some xerophytic mosses, for example, polytrichum, tortula, etc., on cracks and crevices occurred. Mosses outcome lichens as the former having rhizoids can penetrate much deeper in the soil as compared to the latter. Later on, some mosses were replaced by higher hydrophytic mosses like Funaria, Sphagnum, Polytrichum, etc. Several small animals also like uh, anthropods like spiders, mites, etc. also inhabit there. Mat of mosses can accumulate water, so moisture status of the habitat improves drastically. All these changes result in increase in soil layer, more accumulation of organic matter, addition of minerals to soil as acid leaches out, which in turn make the habitat suitable for the next cereal community. The next stage is the teredophytes stage. Availability of moistures, humus and soil for anchorage felicitate the colonization of teredophytes, for example, Selaginella, Adiantum, etc. These plants increase the process of weathering. Biological activities, rapid decomposition of organic matter and more soil accumulation and moisture status create conditions for growth of herbaceous plants. The next stage is herb stage. Ferns are now replaced by many aggressive weeds and hardy grasses. First annual weeds colonize which are then followed by biennial and finally perennial grasses. Members of family Poesi and Gramini dominates. With the growth of grasses and forbs, transpiration takes place which reduces the prevailing temperature. In addition to microorganisms and several invertebrate animals like arthropods, nemopods, annelids, etc., vertebrate animals also appear and gradually modify the habitat. The next stage is the shrub stage. Further alteration of environment, especially conditions of soil provides conditions for the establishment of shrub followed by small woody plants such as acacia, prosopis, capparis, zazipus, etc. They grow densely and cast shadows on herbs. Now the habitat will become more favorable for the growth of shrubby vegetation compared to herbaceous vegetation. The dead and decaying herbaceous plants help in addition of considerable amount of organic matter into the soil. With extensive root system, shrubs penetrate into soil and develop white cracks in rocks and thus stimulate the process of soil formation. Rate of transpiration increases which result in moderation of uh, temperature and increase in humidity. All forms of vertebrates will now become associated with the altered vegetation. The forest stage, the increase in the soil depth, moisture content, nutrient availability, soil organic matter and sufficient moderation of environment favors the growth of woody trees. Sparsely distributed woody trees with stunted growth in the beginning dominate the habitat which over a period of time was then replaced by deeply rooted dense tall trees. Finally, a climax forest community established with stratification of vegetation represented by short trees, shrubs and various forms of herbaceous ground vegetation along with various forms of animals. This stage initially remains the same until no more change in the environment occurs. Within the same broad climatic belt, cereal stages starting in water and on the rock lead to the same type of climatic community. In the slide, the diagram describes the various cereal stages of lithosphere, starting from the bare area that is the rock surface in the dry tropical region. To summarize this module, we can say that climax is the ultimate step of ecological succession. In this module, we have seen two examples of succession that is the hydrosphere and the lithosphere. Hydrosphere starts with a pond or aquatic system whereas lithosphere starts from a rock or a bare land but both of them reaches the climax that is the ultimate step to ecological succession is the forest stage in both the examples. Thank you.